Kapo in the morning on AM 970. The answer. It's a marshmallow world in the winter when the snow comes to cover the ground. It's time for play. It's a whipped cream day. Is this a politically correct song? Can we play this song? Is that all right? Marshmallow World? Is Fluff going to get upset now? I'm not sure. I'm afraid to do anything. Mike, it's so politically correct. That's what I love about you, Mike Lindell. You believe in it. Your faith is strong in it. And you do it. And when you, and again, I said this before, Mike Lindell, the great, the one, the only, they always say, Mr. My Pillow. Is that funny? <laughs> Mr. My Pillow. But you're, you're so much more than that, as great as the My Pillow is. And I thank you for always being such a great sponsor. You were here from day one, man. Mm-hmm. And Darren came in and said, I want you to meet Mike Lindell. And then we hit it off. And we've been in Minnesota hanging. That was a great. That was a great time. Nineteen right? below that time, Joe. Oh, it was. It's your all truck. The time. It was your <laughs> poor Joe. He looks up. Is this sure? Is this sure? Is something wrong with your truck here? I go, no, it's nineteen. I did my other my Mike Michael. Let's go out to dinner. I go, we go to dinner. So we went to like uh, Numero Uno Pizza or something like that. It was like I didn't even know what it was. I said I thought you were going to say it was a fancy fancy <laughs> restaurant. Said, Joe, I don't eat with two forks. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> You were great. I said, this guy's so down to earth. And then you took me around. I met all the, my pillow. You talked about charity. And then you and I, on the plane ride out, talked about the inner cities and your close relationship right. with Ben Carson yeah, yeah. and my mission that I rail about on the radio. And you're watching now on YouTube and Facebook and kind enough to listen always. Part of this family uh, with uh, Frank and Al and Debbie. As they, they listen, they hear me rail about the inner cities, all right. the things they're going after the president for. Mm-hmm. Can we just, like, I hope Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer today, they're with the president. Can we just help out the way you did? You stepped in. Right. And what's happening in the south side of Chicago and Oakland and East St. Louis and Patterson, New Jersey. And you keep it right there and you take in all these people and actually do something about it. Tell me about yeah. the president's inner city initiative, well, Mike. Well, we're going to be doing so much... Um you know, you got to start like a, you know. I, I spent a lot of time there, Joe, with my <laughs> drug addiction, and, uh, so and uh, true. but getting uh, with the with the amazing jobs that he's creating right now. It's that's a st- you know that's a start. But we're doing. Uh, I'm doing so much with my foundation where we're helping uh, helping um, uh, individuals, private sector money to get started. And there's like there's different organizations like uh, 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 the Salvation Army. It's called Pathway to Hope. Mm-hmm. It's the best program. Um, uh, it's like a social service program, but you're not just giving money. You're, te- you know, teaching yeah. people yeah. Um, different things that they need to know to to get to. Like the, just because you have the job, there's a lot of other things that might get in the way. And um, and then the Ben Carson's and Vision Center is just amazing. I mean, tell tell so, us about that. There's now. so many things. That's like a hub, and it gets you. It it actually there's so many parts, but one of the parts is it it takes um, your skills, um, what you're skilled at, or where your passions lie. Maybe mm-hmm. where your passions lie, and mm-hmm. uh, and not just uh, um, put you in a box and say here, you know. And yeah. in the inner cities, like Ben was telling me, you know, you might only get one opportunity, and you might miss it. You know, you might miss it. Where where here, it can, you know, it shows you, you know, here's all these different opportunities, and here's what's, you know, what what motivates people is passion. You know, if you're passionate about mm-hmm. something, mm-hmm. and I always said you can have the best job if it's not a job if you're passionate about it. If you, you know, yep, yep, yep. And uh, and it really um, getting. Um, um, I, I'm doing a lot of stuff in Detroit right now, and I have a, a gal there. It's a couple. It's just John and, and Alicia, and they, uh, they're they right in the heart of the inner city, and they were like the hope there. I think it's showing the hope, and they yeah. I put a new roof on their place now, and we've uh, and they're um, they're out there um, every day. They give the shirt off their back, but it's like a, it's like a, a a little hub of each. You know, we're gonna have in each city, and and uh, um, not just get, like I say, not just. Um, putting band-aids out there, you know. Yeah, yeah. uh, Because it will will take, Mike, and I know from working in the inner city communities for 25 years, it's been my mission of at-risk children. Right. It's going to take, and when you see with all the programs they just pour in, and what they take with the inner city too, I know you know this. They they don't solve what the problem is. What you're talking about is solving where yeah, the problem right, emanates right, from. I right, talk about this right, every morning on the radio, Mike. Right. They go out and oh, we'll do different schools, and then oh, well, we'll we'll move everybody out to this this uh, living arrangement where we'll pay for. It. Right. No, create. What's happening in the city? Right. Re, it's going to take 10, 20 yeah, years, maybe, right? Maybe, well, I want to do it faster. I, whoa, I mean, whoa. I mean, uh, yeah. um, you know, you, care, <laughs> you don't strike me as an impatient guy. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't have patience for that, let's get this done now. I want to help now. And, and, uh, 
And it's uh, I see you see what's working in different community mm-hmm. communities. Like I'm not kidding. Like Detroit, there's so many good things that are going on in Detroit and have been for years. And I and even in my you know my home state Minneapolis and, yeah, and, yeah. and in Minnesota. But but you see these things that are working, and then you use them in other places. It's kind of like uh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's kind of like an entrepreneur when you when you look at a product, yeah. you reverse engineer it and yeah. say, okay, how do I solve this piece, this piece, this piece. And then you have you don't reinvent the wheel. You look at good organizations that are doing things like Salvation Army that aren't. People just think that they're uh, out there just for clothes and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. And here they're for addiction. They're for uh, this pathway to hope. All these different programs, but it's not just them. It's um, um, uh, you're you're taking. I guess, and I guess that's another thing that Ben's and Vision Centers do. It, it kind of it's like a hub of a wheel mm. where a, um, it reaches out to all these different spokes in the community. Yep, 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 got and it. And it engages everybody. Great, great. We all have the same goal. Yeah. But to, but to get everybody connected. Any of it faith not, based? Uh, faith based because you know the faith the, the, the pastors within the industry. I, I mean, the pastors absolutely are you so engage powerful. All the churches. Yeah, mm-hmm. there it's a huge thing. I spoke at, uh, um, in, uh, in actually in Washington D.C. with uh, a Star Parker. Um, I don't know if you know her, but she's uh, she does so much with the inner cities yep, yep, and stuff, yep. and she, uh, um, and uh, we, but we, but using the engaging the pastors they, from all these from what, all these what, cities. They what about churches. this, Mike? You know this better than anybody else. So maybe you can help. And I'd like to offer my help in any initiative you have because I talked to some union guys. I've said this before in the air, so forgive me if you're listening. I repeat myself, but sometimes you got to say it over and over again, Mike. Right to get the message across. Manufacturing, man, just bring the my pillow in Minneapolis and Minnesota is the one thing. Can they bring some manufacturing if they went to South Side of Chicago? Again, it's going to take ten, twenty years to turn around, create jobs. Yeah, yeah, it, it's and I keep saying, Joe, it's not going to be ten, twenty years. We're going to do this. Faster. I love it. I love you, man. I love you. Here's uh, it's the you know what's going on right now, and I'll bring this back to our president. He brings such confidence to to uh like where i'm at it's not just my pillow it's all these companies yeah. now hiring from the inner city hiring people the giving people second chances too you know and and second chance and and they're creating careers not just jobs our wages are going up because the consumer confidence is at an all-time high i yeah. believe that and i believe entrepreneur and business owners are at an all-time high in spite of all the attacks on our president which yeah. is shameful yeah it's absolutely shameful i'm going to put that in there yeah. did i say shameful yeah. it is shameful all the I great don't. things that are going to be done in this country yeah. for the people that have needed yeah. it forever yeah i not you know Inner city, middle America, every every middle class, everybody's it is everybody is you know I I say to people all the time, what's going on that you're so upset about, you know? Well, you know he said this this. I go, you know, what do you care about? You know what's going on? You know there he's fighting for uh, he's fighting for us, mm-hmm. and and uh, all these good things that are going on, they can't say one bad thing, Joe. That's going on. It's they incredible. never they're never you specific. Know? You're absolutely yeah, they're right. They're not specific. They'll say, well, he said that one thing one time. Yeah, yeah. I go, really? <laughs> oh, what two years ago? Who cares? You ever said anything? You know. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, going, yeah. You know, I you know, and if I fe- say something, you know, it really gets me. Uh, I'm going to give it a little little political now, but I go down this. I'm in, I'm in Minnesota. I'm at the Minnesota State Fair, and there's about 1,000 people come up to me. They want pictures and so on. And every one of them, Joe, says, except for one now, every one of them, they say two things. Wow, your transformation. What an amazing story that God brought you through. And, and, and we're praying for our president. We, you know, we're so glad you're back in the president. This is in Minnesota now. One guy comes up to me, and he goes, you know what? I really like what you're doing, but you're aligning yourself with the worst guy, blah, blah, blah. And I go, I go, you know, I met him. I know him. He's a friend. You know, I, I, you're telling me now that I'm an idiot. You know, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can't take that from me. And anyway, I started arguing with him. He looks right. He goes, I got to go. <laughs> well, you know, he didn't want. He they have no that, argument. That's, a, that's yeah. the same thing. It's the same old thing, Joe. That's that voice. Yeah. yeah Those people are yeah, trying to ruin yeah. these good things that are going on in our country. And it's, I'll say it again, it's shameful. Yeah, you're absolutely right. As an internationally renowned businessman, right. and I, because I talk to people locally in New York, you see the construction in New York? Right. You see that how New York has blossomed? Yeah. It's since the president's been in office. Yeah. Governor Cuomo won't tell you that. Mayor de Blasio right. ain't right. going to tell you that. Right. But they, you know, people, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike Lindell, because you know, right. is that they feel they can w- release their money now. Absolutely. It's the confidence, and they, it's it's such a confidence. I have entrepreneurs that, you know, they call me all the time. I'm going to be launching a new platform next year or two. I got to tell you about that. But they, uh, these, all these entrepreneurs with new inventions, people are finally willing to take some chances because you feel safe. 
You yeah, feel yeah, safe with yeah, the economy. Yeah, you feel yeah, safe yeah, with yeah. The, the consumer confidence. Yeah. They got to go hand in hand. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And, um, you know, it's not just everybody buying from Amazon. You know, it's, uh, you know, buying from our boxers, buying from my entrepreneurs and stuff. And, uh, and uh, did I badmouth Amazon? Okay. No, no. <laughs> no, that's all right. We, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, listen, listen, you make your product here. They're selling stuff from China. <laughs> well, they're that, copying. They put stuff up there and copy a product right next to it. No, I there. know. I just I know. don't. I mean, it's horrible. No, but can we talk on. about that now? Because if, if, if Bezos came to Newark, I would never say the bad thing. I held, I held my tongue. I bit my tongue for a year while we waited. And Newark was in the running. Now that he dissed Newark completely, he's in Long Island City, which I think is great. They take products on Amazon, yeah. like the my pillow. They'll duplicate it in yeah. China. Yeah. They'll yeah. count. Counterfeit it, and then Amazon and sells it. They, they sell ads, and the ads are above you, and yeah. it's just horrific. Oh, they oh. Do it the same. Google does the same thing. They're just as bad. Uh, Zuckerberg, I mean Zuckerberg from Facebook. <laughs> um, they, uh, I mean these guys, these guys from Silicon Valley selling ads. Where entrepreneurs in this country trying to get your product, you work hard to be number one organically, and then they sell seven ads above you, and they're products that are either uh, counterfeit or made overseas or all these things. It's, it's shameful. That's shameful, too. Wow. And that needs to wow. be stopped. That's one thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's in our country for – if you're an entrepreneur – you need a place to put your product yeah. and stuff, and it's coming, Joe. Mike, I'm telling you, we with you in charge, we feel so much more confident. I'm telling you, and I, I want to tell me about the unplanned, about the movie that you did, that yeah, you played yeah. a part in the movie. Right. They came, they called me up. Uh, I was going on my way to Israel, and uh, and they called me up. They said we've been praying. We want you in this movie. It's uh, it's about uh, Abby Johnson. It's a true story about Planned Parenthood, where she worked there. She couldn't take what she's seen, and and. Uh, uh, brought down this one one of the Planned Parenthoods, but anyway, they asked me to be in. I said, "Well, we prayed about it, and you're going to be in it." I said, "Well, I haven't yet." And I'm, and I was on the plane with Kendra, and I, and uh, and we did. We prayed about it. And I heard loud and clear. I said, "You know, to go in this, they wanted me to be a part in it." And I liked it so much. I said, "I put in a million dollars." I to, wow. to this cause. It's got an amazing, amazing uh, story, and it's a true story, and uh, and I have a big part in it. Um, I actually run the bulldozer in this film. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, and they, we got down to the set. It was a hidden set and uh, or hidden place because it was so controversial. And I get down there. and There's 300 extras, and we've got the sun's going down. And here, I know I'm going to drive this bulldoze, and they bring in an extra. I go a stunt man. I go, I, I'm, I'm not going to go on a, a radio and TV after this and tell me you used a stunt man. I said, I said, I, I'll walk. It's great. <laughs> so, it's guess, great. so anyway, after the three producers you, you, talked you, to you, each you, other, I had to do it. You I did it. it. Yeah, I get in there and I pull the lever and all of a sudden, you know, they backed up all the 300 extras and stuff. And <laughs> I didn't take the emergency break off right away. So everyone's going, what's going on? They're going, and before they're going to go, cut, can bring in the stunt man. I go, I go, I was just testing it. <laughs> without a hitch because we only had one take. One, because the we sun went, was going we, down. We, we, we yeah, had yeah, never yeah, been yeah, able to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Classic, but I, uh, yeah, they announced <laughs> that, and uh, and uh, it was surprising. That was right after Thanksgiving. They announced that to the country and it went out all the media, and and, mm. and I haven't heard any bad things, you know, like um, have any attacks. Maybe they're tired of attacking now, me. You know, Mike, you, it's because you, you speak so organically. You're so from the heart, and you one-on-one with President Trump, and I know him peripherally, not like you know him, mm-hmm. And I and as soon as he got elected, uh, Frankie and I were saying this is great. This is going to be good. And that we, what do we have to worry about? This guy knows what he's doing. Put yeah. the, the bluster that you see out there, the one on one with Mike Lindell yeah. and Donald J. Trump. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and, and it really it is. And um, you know he um, he he listens so good too. He takes it all in. I he, watched him. Yeah. He takes in all the information, and he's so pragmatic and so common sense. We have a president that has common sense. Yeah. It's just he yeah, makes yeah, his decisions, yeah. his common sense decisions. i got to tell you a real funny story quick, Joe. Do I have a minute? Yeah, sure. Okay, so here I am. He did a shout-out for me in North Dakota at a rally. I saw it. I One saw it live television. Now I, now, I went to him, and I said uh, I had a dinner with him. There was probably eight, ten of us, and uh, this is about a, oh, a couple months after that rally. And I said, I got him on one-on-one on the side, and I said, Mr. President, I said, uh, I, said I want to thank you for that shout-out, but I said, I said, I got to tell you a funny story. I said, a big paper that you don't like, I'm not going to name it here. We can name one of three, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They called me up and they go, they said, uh, yeah, Mike, this is so-and-so from, uh, you know, this paper. And he said, wow, the president did a big shout-out for you. You must have, uh, 
you must have sold a lot of pillows. And I said, this wasn't about selling pillows. I said, he said he liked the pillow and he used it, but he said, this was about me as a businessman yeah, being a yeah. good ad buyer yeah. and stuff. And I said, it raised my popularity threefold. And I was go out to, I was able to go out and evangelize for Jesus. I talked to 50,000 millennials at U.S. Bank Stadium. The president looked at me and said, well, what did he say then? I said, he hung up on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to hear that. He didn't want to hear that. That was good. Mike Lindell, like we love you, man. We appreciate Thanks, all that Joe. you've done. Yeah. And I, I cherish our friendship. And God bless you and God, God speed, you, Mike. I'll see you soon. Give my love at home.